Ho! <laughs> so apparently, I like alien smut now. Hey guys, welcome back. So I've been circling the idea of reading Ice Planet Barbarians for a while now, um, but I wasn't sure if I was ready to dive into the world of alien romances. I'm a contemporary like ro romance girl for the most part. Um, but I do dabble in fantasy. So because of that, I had this hunch that I would like Ice Planet Barbarians. Um, and I do have to say that overall, I did enjoy this, <laughs> but probably for a different reason than you would think. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want more book videos. My reasoning behind enjoying Ice Planet Barbarians is because it knows what it is and it's not taking itself too seriously. And what I mean by this is that the book isn't trying to be this great literature. It doesn't even give us in-depth world building or like adequate character development. In the story, we were given a quick world with problems that had very easy solutions. And in any other scenario, I would tear this apart. Like, so why is this so acceptable to me in this scenario? And I think it's because the book was just fun. <laughs> when reading, I felt like the author knew that she was making a quick, fun, smutty alien romance book, and she didn't try to make it something that it wasn't. And what I enjoyed most about this book was that I could just sit back and relax and enjoy the simple story. So I'm about to get into the spoilers of the first book. So if you haven't read it yet and you want to and you don't want spoilers, this is your spoiler warning. So like I said before, we really didn't get much world building or character backstory with this first book. The book was really short. It was 188 pages on ebook. And honestly, it felt short when I was reading it. And like, I was having so much fun when I was reading it that I had actually wanted it to be longer. <laughs> like when it was over, I was like, oh, but there really isn't a shortage of these books right now. Like as of right now, Ruby Dixon has published like 22 of them. So there are a lot to read. So with the first book in Ice Planet Barbarians, we have our main character, Georgie. Um, and we learn that she's been abducted by aliens along with these other young women who are also her age. The initial setup of the story started a bit slow for me. I wasn't enjoying um, reading the whole alien thing and I was questioning whether or not I wanted to continue. Then the story's pace picked up when the ship they were on crashes on this ice planet and the women assume that the aliens who abducted them will be coming back to collect them soon because um, they're considered like cattle to them. And we know this because one of the other women in the compartment, um, her name was Kira, she had an implant in her ear that had translated the alien language to her. So that's how they knew like what was happening to them basically. So we crashed on this ice planet and then our protagonist, Georgie, is picked to be the kind of the leader. And she goes out of the crash ship to see if she can go find help for them on this alien planet. So while she's out exploring, she gets caught up in like this animal trap that was intended to catch animals for food by our main male alien leave, Vectal. She passes out when she gets hung upside down. And then this is where we switch point of views to Vectal's. And as soon as he sees her, he has um, this like cooey that resonates. So if you're familiar with like the mate trope, like that's what's happening here. He realizes that she is his mate, which basically means that for him, it's like this instant love and now he must protect her at all costs. So he takes her down and takes her to a cave to take care of her. And then when she wakes up, <laughs> he's just casually eating her out. And she wakes up and she is weirdly not freaked out by the alien, probably because she knows that they landed on an alien planet. Um, but she's kind of like super turned on because he's really good at giving head, apparently. And so thus begins our um, alien smut. <laughs> Okay, and so this is where we get the description of the alien. So <laughs> she's like, he's not human. I can tell he's really not human. And it's like, yeah, because you're on an alien planet. Horns arise from his hairline and curl around his scalp like a spiky lethal helmet. 
He's blue for one thing. Well, bluish gray with a black mane of hair that reminds me of a lion's mane. His brows are heavy, heavier than any human brow I've ever seen. His face is rugged like it's carved from stone. Going straight down his forehead to the tip of his nose is a striated pattern of ridges of some kind. His bluish gray skin slightly darker there. And his eyes are a glowing shade of blue that I've never seen. Blue like Caribbean waters, but completely without pupils of any kind. And they're glowing as if from within. So that's what our alien race looks like on this planet. And so of course they can't speak to each other in each other's languages. Um, so we have this like dual point of view switching back and forth every so often so we can be in each of the characters' heads. And I thought it was really funny. We have lines like this one where it shows that like that's how he hears um, the English language. So we have each of these characters basically being like, what is this thing that I'm with and like what is going on and trying to like learn each other's differences and like trying to communicate. And then Vectal, the alien, was just so like precious. <laughs> like I feel like that's the best way to describe him. So like since he like resonated or like mated to Georgie, he was like the ultimate doting alien boyfriend during the book. He was like constantly fussing over her and constantly like wanting to make sure that she was happy and taken care of. So you just have like this inner dialogue of him just being like super doting. And it was like really cute, but he's like, she is my mate, my other half. I'll do whatever is necessary to keep her. Sure, she will be safe no matter what the cost. My cooey sings and hums and wants more of our bodies joining and I am eager to do so. <laughs> so for real, if you ever get abducted by aliens and left on some random planet, hope and pray that whatever finds you takes a liking to you like Vectal did to her so that you won't die basically. So doting alien boyfriend is taking care of Georgie and sort of like nursing her back to health because she became, you know, obviously like really weak and malnourished from her time on the alien ship. So he's constantly fussing over her and trying to like protect her and feed her. Um, and then it doesn't take long for them to start having sex because like, obviously, like, where did we think this was going? So a few days have passed and she's managed to like communicate with him that they need to travel back up the snowy mountain that they're on because they've been kind of traveling back down because he's like taking her back to his tribe and she's managed to be like, no, no, we need to go back up there. Um, basically so that they can go and rescue the rest of the women that are back on the ship. Um, but he's like, they can't communicate in the same language. So he doesn't know why she wants to go back to the mountain. Um, he just knows that he loves her and will do anything she wants. So she's in the cave and he's out like hunting to prepare them to continue up this mountain. Um, and then he comes across one of the um, other women dead in the snow. So then it kind of clicks for him like, and he understands like why she wants to go back up the mountain so badly because he's like, oh, there's more of her people up there. So once he understands, they like book it back up this mountain and they get to like where the rest of the women are um, and they find them in like really bad shape. So we get back up there and Kira, who has the ear language translator, is able to tell them what Vectal is saying. And he just casually mentions that like Georgie is his mate and this is news to Georgie. She didn't know this. Like she thought they were just banging basically doesn't know that he's over here like we're mated for life so then he leaves to go get firewood so that he can make a fire for them um and then when he's like <laughs> we have like his dialogue when he's out like gathering the stuff and he's all excited because he's like oh man there's all these women in here and my tribe is super short on women and the tribe is basically dying out and they have all of these like eligible bachelors who are going to be super excited when they find out that there are just all of these win women who have just landed on their planet. And he like hopes that other men in his tribe will also resonate with some of the women. <laughs> so Bechtel gets back and it's decided that him and Georgie will go back to his tribe and they'll gather supplies and the other male aliens to help like come back for all of these women to rescue them um, because they're so weak and they can't just go traveling out into the snow in their conditions. So on the way back to the tribe, we come across this cave of his ancestors which is actually just this like other crashed ship. And <laughs> it's, it was funny to me because in this ship, this is basically where we get the entire world building for the book. Um, so they're in there and Georgie discovers like this control panel and she turns it on. And then the language, she switches the language to English 
And then the ship basically just tells her everything she needs to know. And that is our entire world building. So we learned that like Vectal's ancestors had crashed on this planet centuries ago. And you can only survive on this planet for eight days without a a cooey, which is like this type of parasite thing that is inserted into you and it lives in you and it helps you survive in the atmosphere. But once you get the cooey, you can't ever leave the planet. So you either get it and you stay forever or you don't get it and you die or you try to leave. So, and then this computer system asks her if she wants it to implant uh, Vectal's language into Georgie's brain so that they can actually communicate and so she does, and then just like that, our language barrier issue is solved. So then continuing on in the book, they're, her and um, Vectal and Georgie are actually able to like talk in his language and like get to know each other. So we go back to the tribe and Vectal fills in everyone on what's happened. And the other men of the tribe are like really excited <laughs> about the idea of like women that have just landed on their planet. And so it's decided that a bunch of the bachelors <laughs> will go on a res rescue mission for these other women. And now, since Georgie and Vectal can talk, um, they like discuss their predicament. So she isn't sure if she wants to stay on the planet with him or if she wants to try and leave and go back to Earth, which she's not even sure if she'll be able to get back to Earth. And she's like, well, I think I should discuss it with like all of the other women and kind of like decide what to do as like a group. And then Vectal just like casually mentions that she's probably <laughs> pregnant with their child. And she like freaks out for like one second and then she weirdly was just kind of like okay with it and like moved on from the issue because like she likes him but that was pretty like on par with the rest of the book where like you know you would have like this like this problem or this conflict and then it would like quickly just kind of be like resolved and just okay so at this point the book wraps up pretty quickly so our rescue team of eligible um alien bachelors um travels back to the ship to save the women and then georgie tells vectal like Surprise, there are actually like more women in sleeper pods that I didn't tell you about. And Vectal is like super excited because then that means that there's more women for the tribe and more possibilities that more of these bachelors will resonate with these other hidden women. And so when some of the alien bachelors are like meeting the other women in the thing, Georgie realizes that some of the men have like resonated with some of the women. We don't know who yet, and but this is like obviously setting up for the other like 21 books in the series. So the women discuss back and forth whether or not they should um, stay on the planet or if they should like take their chances and try to go back to Earth. But like, obviously the odds of them being able to find Earth again is very limited. Um, so they had these alien trackers in their arms um, from the aliens that had made them cattle. So they take those out of their arms and then they decide to go with these aliens, like to go back to the tribe. On the way back to the tribe, the men track down and kill this animal that hosts the Kui so that each of the women can have one inserted into them so that they can continue to live onto this planet. And so they each get one and they all just kind of continue on and that's it. So now that they're all on this planet and um, there's some resonating going on, uh, this opens up for the rest of the series where each additional book is focusing on a new couple. So overall for this first book, honestly, I thought it was so much fun to read. I stayed up until like 2 a.m. reading it when I really should have been sleeping. Um, but I just couldn't put it down because I was just enjoying myself so much. Like I was having a genuinely good time reading it. So I'm actually looking forward to continuing the series. I was legitimately having fun with it. And honestly, if you haven't read them, I would recommend it because it's just kind of a simple fun time. So thanks for spending your time with me today and uh, listening to me talk about Ice Planet Barbarians. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.